Hi, I'm Erica Gamet. In this video, we're going to be working inside the Find Change dialog box. If it's not open, head on up to the Edit menu and choose Find Change. We can also just choose Command or Control F. Inside the dialog box, there are four tabs. Most of us hang out inside the Text tab. Some of us even like to hang out in the Grep tab. We're going to mostly be working inside the Text tab. But what I really want to talk about are the icons along the bottom here. What are they and what do they do? They give us more options for what to search on when we're conducting a fine change operation. There are seven of them in total. The text tab has all of them, and the other tabs only have some. But since we're hanging out in the text tab, we'll go over them there. And if you roll over them, you can see what it is they do. The first one is for including locked layers and locked objects. Now, you notice it says find only. That means you can find these objects, but you can't actually make any changes to them. And this first one's a little interesting as it finds them, but it doesn't really tell you that it's found them. I find that it's often useless, but I'm going to mention it anyway. By clicking on it, InDesign now knows that we're looking for items on locked layers. I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit and go over to my layers panel. And I do have a locked layer, my pull quotes. If I turn that on and off, we can see what's on the pull quotes layer. So it is locked, and now it will find items on a locked layer. And I'm going to zoom out just slightly. I know that I have the word wealthy in this final paragraph twice, and it's also here in the pull quote. And because I have the lock layer turn on and wealthy is sitting on a locked layer, we should be able to find the word wealthy. I'll go up into the find what and type wealthy and say find next. And it finds it in the first par or the final paragraph and twice. Now, you may or may not get this warning. It says that the object itself was locked or it's on a locked layer. If I tell it don't show again, it's not quite as clear that something has actually been found. I'm going to run that same find operation again. Find next, it doesn't seem to do anything. Find next, and find next. It didn't say it was done, right? It didn't come up and say nothing found. It means it found it, it just doesn't indicate that it did find it. If I say find next again, now it says search is completed. That's why I said it's a little bit useless. So while it's actually finding it, it's not really giving us any indication. The best bet is to unlock all your layers before you do a find change. You can always lock them again. I'll say OK to that and deselect that and then select this one instead. And this one is include locked stories, also find only. And that's used in an in-copy workflow. If stories are checked out as part of that in-copy workflow, that's considered a locked story. Again, you can find items with this search, but you can't make changes to it. I'm not using in-copy, so we're not going to use that either. The next item is to find items that are on hidden layers or hidden objects. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock the pull quotes layer, but I am going to hide it. Now in this one, it doesn't say find only. That means it will find it and we can make changes to it. But because it's hidden, we won't actually be able to see those changes. I'm going to click off here and make sure that we're starting with an entirely fresh new search. Still searching on the word wealthy. And I do need to make sure that I've selected for it to include those hidden layers. And I'll say find next, find next, and find next. So it is highlighting that text. I just can't see it. I tend not to work with this item either, only because you're working with hidden text and that can get a little confusing. But it's there if you need it. We'll go ahead and turn that off and turn the next one on. And this is to include items on master pages. Now you might have thought you were already searching on master pages, but unless you've turned this on, you were not. And that can get confusing. Let's say we were looking for the word chapter. And I say find next. And it says it can't find the match. When I can clearly see down here at the bottom, that I have the word chapter sitting right here on my page. And I also know that it's not sitting on a hidden layer. So we'll say OK to that. We'll turn on search for master page items and run that search again. Now it finds the text and it even moves us over to the master page in the pages panel. We'll jump back down to that document page, close our pages panel, and open the, the layers panel again, and we'll turn that item off. And I believe by default, this next one is turned on. It's to include footnotes in the search. So I know I have a footnote down there at the bottom of the page. Let's search on great neck, because that's in my footnotes. It's on, and we'll say find next, and it finds it. Now, if you notice, I didn't capitalize great neck, but great neck is certainly capitalized here in the footnote. And that's because the next item is also turned off by default, which is case sensitive. So it doesn't care that I didn't capitalize it. But what if we did only want to find something that had the exact capitalization? We would turn that on. Now running that same search won't find anything because it's not capitalized. I'll run that again, only this time I'll capitalize it and say find next, and it finds it down there. All right, we're going to turn that one off, and we come to the last one. And this one is whole word. 
So this one says that whatever you're looking for, it needs to be a complete word by itself. So let's say, for instance, I'm looking for the word wealth, and I say find next. Well, it finds the word wealth within the word wealthy a couple times there, but I don't want that. I only wanted to find the word wealth when it's a complete word. So let's click off here, make sure we're starting with a brand new search, wealth, turn on whole word, and click find next. And it doesn't find it because it doesn't exist in this document. Now the last two, the case sensitive and the whole word, those don't appear in the grep tab. Those are the two that disappear. And that's because when we're writing grep expressions, we actually have an expression to tell it to only be case sensitive or to search a whole word. And these five exist also in the glyph and the object tabs as well. So now I hope when you go to do your next find change, you realize that you have a little bit more control over what exactly it is and isn't searching. And just make sure that if something isn't coming up and you know it's there, check and see which options you've selected down here. And maybe that's the reason that it's not working out for you. Well, I hope you found this tip helpful. For thousands more InDesign articles and tutorials, head on over to InDesignSecrets.com. Be sure to sign up for our free tip of the week email as well. Thanks for learning with us.